From the flash floods in Libya to the earthquakes in Morocco, Turkey and Syria this year, it's impossible to ignore the growing frequency and intensity of extreme weather events. The raging fires that scorched Maui to the hurricanes and typhoons that left devastation in their wake in the US, 2023 has been marked by a series of catastrophic natural disasters. Death and destruction at the hands of weather disasters has been a prevalent player in a game that perhaps we have made for the human race. It's no secret that we have contributed to the current climate issues, but to what extent? With the UN General Assembly taking place recently and COP28 being held in the UAE just around the corner, conversations will be had with how to battle against a rising global temperature. There is no doubt that tackling climate change needs a rapid transformation of the way our world currently works, how we travel, what we eat and how we use energy, but is it too little too late? What role does climate change play in these tumultuous events? How is our planet transforming before our very eyes? This is Beyond the Headlines and I'm Phil Green and this week we're talking all about climate change. We will tackle the burning questions on what is climate change, the effects that they have on recent weather related natural disasters that we have recently seen, how the Middle East is directly affected by climate change and what can be done. But before we start, if you want all the latest episodes as soon as they come out, just hit the subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcasts. To help decide for these subjects, we speak to Professor Catherine Richardson, Professor in Biological Oceanography at the University of Copenhagen's Sustainability Science Centre. And we speak to Edris Alam, an Associated Professor of Integrated Emergency Management at the Ravdan Academy in Abu Dhabi. This isn't about saving the planet. The planet is going to do just fine. It's about saving our civilizations, modern civilization, human civilization, said Professor Catherine Richardson from the University of Copenhagen. A surprising quote because it's so obvious, yet when do you ever think about climate change from the world's perspective? It is about saving human civilization and not the planet. But in order to know what we need to do, we need to know what is happening to the planet. Well, the Earth is heating up because we put a blanket around it. It's really very simple. When we throw away greenhouse gases, and we always talk about CO2, but there are other greenhouse gases as well. When we throw them away, we think they're gone because we don't see them any longer. In fact, they've accumulated in the atmosphere. And we have raised the concentration, we've increased the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere by more then it increased and decreased when you went in and out of ice ages. Because greenhouse gases act exactly like a blanket. The Earth gets energy, heat from the sun. We all know that. If you touch a, if you touch a black asphalt um, road in the, on a summer day, it's really hot. But in the morning when you wake up and it's been dark, it's not hot any longer. Where did all that heat go? Well, most of it actually radiated away from the Earth. It went back into the atmosphere. Professor Richardson said that the atmosphere is like a blanket that covers the Earth. I asked how much of that blanket have the human race knitted themselves? Oh, we're, <laughs> we've knitted a lot of it. Now, we have to say that every, well, not every planet, most planets have a blanket around them. And a, a planet like Venus has a much thicker blanket naturally than the, than the Earth has. The Earth's natural blanket, if you want to call it that, for the last million years, if you look at it in terms of CO2, has fluctuated between about 180 parts per million, 280 parts per million of CO2. And and when you went from ice ages to non-ice ages, you in the colder periods, it was about 180. And in the warm periods, it was about 280. But it had, didn't go above 280 parts per million for the last million years, at least. Actually, it's longer than that, but I can't remember. The, I can't remember the exact number. But in all of the time that humans have been in our current biological form in this planet, it has never gone above about 280 parts per million. But now it's at 417. And we know that that 280 to 417 is human caused. What a staggering and scary statistic. The Middle East has been particularly badly hit by climate issues. 
with the recent flooding in Libya. To get an idea of why this region is suffering at the hands of climate, we spoke to Dr Edris Allen, Associate Professor of the Integrated Emergency Management at Rabdin Academy, Abu Dhabi. I really expected these questions because we are facing now Libya, a major catastrophic uh, floods, and then just before uh, Morocco um, earthquake, then before Libya, Turkey earthquake. So it's a really relevant question to the region. Even Pujara floods 2022 in the UAE, the place we are talking now. So I will answer these questions directly relating to climate change uh, because climate change is a global phenomena. This climate aspect we are experiencing in the Middle East, in the Middle Eastern region. So that's said, uh, we can, what you seeing in maybe low-income countries in Maldives, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, in Manila, uh, 10, 20 years before, we all experiencing now this in the, even in the first world, in the developed world. So that said, we cannot uh, avoid it as a global community. So first say in the Middle East, uh, planning in, on the, the, the first one in the Greece, uh, Libya, current dam failure. Uh, but what's the cause of the dam failure? So if you see the rainfall in the um, regions, nearly 440 millimeter in 24 hours, which may be 27 years people did not experience like that kind of um, rainfall intensity at a short period. So again, uh, the cyclone Daniel, uh, the way it developed from the Mediterranean region to and fell down, fall down to the Libya coast and the dam failure, it means that we don't have the forecasting skill still. Um, we don't have the foresightness actually, the prediction capacity Dr. Hallam mentioned preparedness. We wondered if we had the tools available to fully prepare for a natural disaster. We have now very systematic disaster risk management. We call disaster risk reductions. So what does that mean? It's a cycle of activities. So pre-disaster period, during disaster period, and post-disaster period. So pre-disaster period, we say uh, the before cyclone happen or any uh, earthquake happen, what we can do that is called the mitigations. Mitigation is the terms used to make the long term planning for the building code, for example. So we can maintain the building codes and we can develop the land use zone. So high risk zone, we can pro prohibit uh, to make the settlements uh, in that kind of region. So now also about the early warning systems, if you remember now, even earthquake early warning systems, tsunami early warning systems, flood warning systems, and the hurricane warning systems exist. So we used to, you have to use this effectively. There is no denying that humanity needs to take action now against climate issues. But is it too late? We asked Professor Richardson her thoughts. I think we're in an incredibly exciting time for humanity. And, and please, this isn't about saving the planet. I mean, the planet's going to do just fine. It's about saving our civilizations. Modern civilization, human civilization, in spite of the fact that our, our ancestors have been here in their current form, we've been here for about a quarter of a million years in the present form that we have. And yet most of that time we ran around looking for our food. It's only in the ten, last 10,000, 10 to 12,000 years that everything we associate with modern civilization has developed. And that's everything from you know Stone Age, Bronze Age, you know, Iron Age, all that sort of stuff everything in the last 10 to 12,000 years. And in that period, the Earth's conditions, what we're calling the climate, but it's not only climate, the living conditions on Earth have been very stable and relatively warm. And many people, many scientists, anthropologists, associate the fact that we were able to develop modern civilization in the last 10,000 years with the fact we've had these specific Earth conditions. And now we humans are in a, in a position to be able to change drastically and potentially irreversibly change those conditions. And what the climate and the biodiversity crisis, which is just as important as climate, is showing us is that we need to manage our relationship with the planet as a whole. We know we need to do it. We know how much we have to restrict our impacts on the earth. So now it's a question of doing it. It's innovating 
to make sure we can do it. And we know it can be done because we are organisms just like every other living being on this planet. And life has been here for about three and a half billion years. And it's learned we don't produce waste. Every time there was waste, there was an organism that went in and found a way to use it to something else to keep the circular economy of nature going. So we can learn from nature about what we need to do. So yes, I think this is probably the most exciting time ever in human history. COP28 is coming to the UAE in November and climate is top of the agenda. We asked Dr. Alam to tell us his thoughts on the role that the UAE is playing in the battle against climate change and what he hopes the outcome of COP28 will be. UAE uh, definitely has taken lead uh, COP2028 uh, coming here in Dubai and uh, we see the lots of planning from the UAE government side and we see the in terms of the climate change um, they, are, they are making lots of efforts on scientific innovations, clean energy. Luckily, UAE little bit, um, you know, not much affected by other forms of disaster. So I know there will be COP28 most, uh, mostly um, will be developed this because this is a high developed country now in the world. Uh, de- developing country will definitely will expect more commitments uh, under the leadership of the UAE from the US, Canada, Australia, Germany, UK for the carbon emissions. They will definitely expect more commitment. And second thing, they will also negotiate for the loss and damage happen in the developing countries. So that's happening So also in Sharm al-Sheikh is, uh, last year in the Egypt. And this year will be more negotiation, more demand from the developing countries for the loss and damage happen in developing countries for compensations. Uh, the debate from development will be raised very strongly this, this year. And also being the Middle East and you see the little bit uh, from the Western uh, human rights group, climate rights group, I would expect they will be very, very much active this year. It's important to peel back the layers of misinformation and examine the scientific evidence that connects global warming to the dramatic shifts in our climate. And the conversations that will be had at the upcoming COP28 are vital in helping tackle the crisis. However, Conversations had by world leaders won't make any difference if we don't individually act and do our own bit to help save humanity. And that is a battle we can absolutely win. This was Beyond the Headlines. I'm Phil Green. A huge thank you to Professor Catherine Richardson and Dr Edris Alam for your thoughts. If you want to get all the latest episodes of Beyond the Headlines as soon as they come out, then just hit the subscribe button in your podcast app.